Coming up next, my friend, real estate coach, guru, motivational speaker, best-selling author, Brian Buffini joins me live in studio. We take your calls together. It's going to be great. And it starts now. All right, here we go. Coming to you live from our Ramsey Solution Studios in Nashville. You've joined a conversation about you, specifically what you were created to do. You were created to fill a unique role in your work. That means you are needed, and that means you must do it because somebody out there needs you to show up and be the best version of you. That's what we talk about here on the Ken Coleman Show. So if you're new to the program and you're watching us live, welcome aboard. If you're watching us later, uh, as many people do here on the tube, we're thrilled to have you with us as well. Now, if you're watching live at noon Eastern Standard Time, the phone number is going to be on the screen, 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577. And uh, we're going to take the normal calls today, but I want to give priority to anybody out there that might be watching saying, hey, I am in real estate. Uh, I want to excel. I want to do more, be more, uh, or maybe you are a brand new into it. Maybe you're even in the process of getting qualified. Today, we're going to give you priority as well. And some of you are thinking about it. You're going, okay, Ken, I've been engaging in the show. And one of these things, these ideas I've been mulling around as it relates to doing what I was created to do is in the real estate world. And I just need a little extra confirmation, maybe a nudge today. Well, this guy, the founder of Buffini and Company, the number one training company, the largest training company in all of North America. Three million plus people, their organization is trained and counting throughout the world, over 41 countries and counting. He's right here. This isn't a cutout. And uh, we're going to take your calls, 844-747-2577. So call now, jump in, and we'll get to it. But, Brian, first of all, I want to say welcome. It's a thrill to have you in studio. We've talked about this day for years, and now with our schedules aligning, it's happening. It is. I'm glad to be here. I love the old studio, but uh, this is pretty nifty, man. You got yourself uh, – <laughs> You got yourself an upgrade, right? You went from the outhouse <laughs> to the penthouse. So that is true. Well done. It is true. It is possible. If I can do it, you can do uh -huh. it. Uh, and so here's here's the deal. Before we you know dive into the calls, uh, I want people to hear a, a, a snapshot of your story because it is a true epic. I mean, uh -huh. they could make a movie out of it. <laughs> when we talk about uh, the American dream. You're somebody as an Irishman who mm -hmm. has a very unique view of it. Mm -hmm. You have a best-selling book entitled The Immigrant Edge, which unpacks the story but then goes into incredible detail of how to uh, do what it is that you were born to do. You and I are in alignment on this, and you figured it out. Uh, I'm going to take you to, because it's such a big story, you're a youngster. You come over to the States for the first time. Take us to that moment mm -hmm. what was going on in brian buffini's life so i'm just enjoying i'm in san diego right which is the weather's perfect <laughs> uh, everybody's fit and in shape and i'm selling t-shirts off a cart down by the beach i mean uh, you know i'm living in a studio apartment it's it's the you know i'm 19 years old it's the dream um I, the dream turned to a nightmare quick i end up in a very serious motorcycle accident I almost lost my life we're gonna amputate my leg i was good gangrene serious surgeries uh basically rods and screws put in so i couldn't leave wow. so i'm 19 years old two hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt seven thousand miles away from home and uh, not a lot of money at home so that's where i started and i started you know and, I, and that's why i always you know you know i i will wrestle people to the ground when they start talking about america because people like myself have such an appreciation for it and uh, i eventually got into real estate business and then uh, applied all world principles. My father and grandfather trained us in the painting business, and they had a principle, Ken, that said, every day they'd say, can you put your name to that? Mm. And when you did your work, can you put your name to it? And if you couldn't put your name to the work, you had to do it over. Mm. So I applied that principle with some new school marketing techniques, and uh, within a short period of time, became very successful selling real estate, became one of the top realtors in the state, one of the top realtors in the country. What did you love about it? Oh. I, I, once you once you start experiencing success, yeah, I just want to strip it down. What did you love most about that work? Well, I think you have to have that tuning fork moment. I, I had a tuning fork moment as a kid. I remember being in school, and uh, we go into the trip to Rome, mm -hmm. and I'm haggling at the market and ha buying a, a leather jacket. And the next thing you know, I got a deal, and 
I'm slapping this guy's face. He slapped me on the head. And next day, the teacher, the orneriest teacher we ever had, comes and says, can you get my wife that bag? And the next day, the next teacher comes along. Next thing, I'm, I'm chief negotiator, right? <laughs> and I knew right then, I was like, I think I got this thing with the sales. So I always kind of enjoyed sales. And then with the principles my father and grandfather gave me, can you put your name to it? Combining sales and service. For me, Kenny, putting the keys in the hands of a yeah. couple that never thought they'd own a house, that never thought this could happen for them. Uh, helping somebody who's, they're in a little condo and they've got uh, two babies and they're driving each other nuts and helping them move up into the house out in the suburbs to the school district and, and just handing them the keys and seeing that expression on the face. That, that is where it's at. And if you have a say, I'll tell you one story. It just occurred yeah. to me today because yeah. you always pull the best out of me. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell a story that I, I don't know I've ever told, which is... Oh, it's exciting. Well, I, I was with a couple who were getting a divorce. Yeah. And it's so in your guy's wheelhouse because they were getting a divorce because they couldn't afford the house. Mm -hmm. And they needed to sell the house and whatever else. I meet with them and I'm the realtor. So I'm there supposed to put the house on the market, make commission. I ask a bunch of questions. I find out very early on, like, hang on a second here. There was just nothing was making sense to me. And I, and I finally, you know, I'm 26 years old. I put my briefcase down. I said, you know, can I talk to you guys? I go, there seems to be a lot of love in this room. Wow. And you guys are getting a divorce because of a house? Because it's, it's killing you? I said, I just think if I got a couple of people I can refer you to, then this one counselor and this and that and the other. And I said, I, I don't think you should put your house on the market. I think you should fight to get your debts right, yeah. which is the whole work of Ramsey Solution. And then I said out of nowhere, I said, would you mind if I prayed with you? Now, I've never done anything like this before since I put my two hands on them. I prayed for him, and at the end of the time, the two hands come together. Mm. Now, these two brought me. They were sitting on the edge of the table, mm -hmm. and it was like, wow, this is what I was put on earth to do. Yeah, That was like, I don't care about the money. I don't care about the commissions. And years later, when I became a successful realtor, and they'd asked me to give my story on stage, I had the same feeling. Mm. And I thought, I can reach a ballroom of a 1,000 people at the same way I could that couple. Yeah. And that's what brought me into that. So I think, you know, I love what you're doing. And I think this next, from paycheck to purpose, so many people think that I, I have to get to a certain place economically before I think about the purpose. Mm. But I think you have to be listening for those tuning yeah. fork moments. Right. I had a tuning fork moment in Italy in a, in a leather market. I had that tuning fork moment sitting in front of a couple who were getting divorced. And because I helped them, they didn't get divorced. Yeah. Then that led me to the speaking business. Not I want to be on stage. Not I want adulation. I want that kind of impact. And that's yeah. what drove me. So I think people have to be, you have to be in tune with yourself, but you have to be listening for that little tuning fork that goes off and go, yes. ooh, that feels like yeah. me. Yeah. That feels like me. Uh, he is Brian Buffini joining me here on the Ken Coleman Show. By the way, 844-747-2577. You want to win in real estate uh, and you've got a question. This guy, we're talking Obi-Wan Kenobi here, okay? <laughs> so don't miss this opportunity. Call in now. All right, I want to go back to the story because mm. this is what we talk about every day on the Ken Coleman Show yeah. right here. In that moment with that couple, while you loved sales, and by the way, folks, watch what's going on here. Brian's got the talent. He's good at it. He realizes that when he's a kid. Uh, and, and, and he loves the work, too, of selling a solution. I mean, that's just let's keep it super simple. Watch what's happening here. But in that moment in that living room, the mission piece comes in. Talent, passion's there. But in that moment, mission reveals itself to you because uh -huh. you go, this isn't just a solution and a home. A home is nothing without a family in uh -huh. it. And you realize there's influence. There's transformation. I can sell a home, but also maybe save a family. That's a big deal, uh -huh. Brian. And so I'm just curious, from that moment on, you have tremendous success. Uh, let's fast forward. How, when does the... The realization of, wait a second, I can not just sell homes and sell a lot of them and do very well. I can teach people how to do it, train people how to do it, and thus exponentially increase my influence. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, success leaves clues. Yeah. And one of the things is, like, I didn't wake up and go, I want to be a dancer. Okay? <laughs> I want to be a dancer. That's me. You know, there's there's the breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. Hansel and Gretel, all the way along, which is very important because the purpose topic is very intoxicating. Oh, yeah. But success leaves clues along the way. Mm -hmm. I got to that point now. I was successful. I was I was well out of debt. I was a millionaire. I was one of the top salesmen. And I had this experience, and I went, hang on. It turns out impact is more important to me than a paycheck. Yeah. And now, ultimately, is there a way to do both? Mm. 
then what happened is I, went, I would be asked to come and speak at conferences, and I did it for free for a couple of years. Mm. I, I did it as a way to give back to the industry. And then this is an important piece for me. I had my wife come and hear me. And my wife is, you know, no one loves you better, loves you more, and going to tell you the truth. And when I would go and guest speak for people, she didn't like being away to the kids by herself. We have six kids. She watched me impact an audience, and at the, we're having dinner that night. She says, you've got to do this. Mm. And we didn't even know what that meant. We didn't know how much sacrifice was involved. And was, but she goes, you've got to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think getting that external confirmation yes. from truth tellers in your life mm -hmm. is a big deal. Because I have people go, I want to be a speaker. Right. I want to be in front of millions. <laughs> I, want, I just want to be a speaker. I just right. know I can do it. And uh, everyone around goes, man, they, they're crap. I mean, yeah. you, you need to get that feedback. Yeah. You know? Um, well, let's stay there for a second because you know? this is actually really good. Because yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you with that. Okay. When that person says that to you, what do you ask them? When they say, they give me the feedback. Oh, I know what you have, but I want you to tell <laughs> yeah. people what you ask them. Well, what do you ask them? Yeah, first thing I want to know when someone's giving me advice, what have you done? Yeah. You know, I want to know yeah. where you're coming from. I want to know that you're, yeah. you know, uh, you know, that you've actually got a background in what you're saying. That's it. That you've got some juice to say and you've got, yeah. hey, you know, I have a friend of mine, like very serious and he's a Navy SEAL and mm -hmm. his wife wants to be a musician and da, 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 da. Well, one of the top guys in Nashville here, I had him listen to all her stuff. And then he did a Zoom call with her. Yeah. And he encouraged her to stay in the marketing yeah. business. Yeah. Interesting. You know? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I, if somebody says it to me, I go, what do you want to talk about? Yeah. You want to be a speaker? Great. What do you yeah. want to speak about? Right. What? Uh, yeah. What have you done? Right? I mean, no, I want the adulations. Like, yeah. what have you done? Right? Are you, what? Be what successful. and why? Be successful at something and then speak on it. Yeah. As opposed to, I think the real thing is, you don't want the outcome. That's it. You know, you can't just want the outcome. The process is where it's at. That's it. We talked about it. You were on our show and the podcast, and we talked about yeah. passion and that it's something you're yeah. willing to suffer for. Yeah. And here's the deal. People say yeah. to me, I want to be a speaker. Okay, great. Yeah. I've been in 2,000 hotel rooms. Yeah. Away from my family. Oh, yeah. And in places, and they all weren't the Omni downtown Nashville. That's right. That's <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, and before you get there, are you willing to talk to 20 people who yep. don't even want to hear from you? Yeah. They're, oh, yeah. they're forced to hear you because oh. that's how you get started. Somebody does you a favor and go, yeah, yeah I'll let you talk to my group. And sure. that group's going, seriously? Yeah. I'm just here for the uh, treats afterwards. Well, the arms, here the rice the arms are folded. Are they're being crusty or whatever. You asked me this morning, how was the audience? They, they're a little light. Oh, I, you know, you develop a few techniques. Okay, you're going to respond Let's go. here. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Enough of this already. You right. know? But that's only after you suffer crickets. Right. Looking at people who are soulless. Oh, they yeah. feel soulless. And so that's the issue. What do you want to speak about? Yeah. Why do you want to do it? Yeah. And then are you willing to suffer mm -hmm. all of the stuff? Really good stuff there. He's Brian Buffini. All right, we got uh, calls are coming in. We still have some phone lines. Here's what I'm saying. If you want some real estate-specific advice, uh, today's the day. Let's go, 844-747-2577. But uh, Brian's going to jump in with me. I'm so thrilled. Uh, we're going to coach some folks up together. It's going to sure. be great. Uh, I want to get back to the story real quick. So you begin the process, you speak, and, and Beverly's there, and she goes, Brian, like, you need to do this. And mm -hmm. that affirmation is so huge. Mm -hmm. And so you go, okay. Uh, and now, I mean, the company's massive worldwide influence, uh, but I don't want to focus on that. I want people mm -hmm. to hear how we go to stage two of the seven stages, get qualified. How did you get qualified? Mm -hmm to become a world-class coach and trainer and speaker? Because that's a process. That was a new channel for sure. you, a new lane. I spent two years doing it for free. There it is. I, I, was, in, I was invited to everything. They were big. They were small. They were, um, you know, uh, I've had the worst introductions known to mankind. <laughs> uh, you know, How many uh, times has your name been butchered? Oh, I butchered that. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, I get this, you know, uh, welcome to our event. Our beloved Mary, who's been with the company for 22 years, had a heart attack this morning. Yeah. She died. Yeah. It's devastating. We're all devastated. Please welcome Brian Buffini. Oh, I mean, you know, gosh. get in line. So, you know, I, I had a guy one time that his company, every, he was 8,000 people in the auditorium, and every time he mentioned his company's name, 8,000 people stood up and booed. And uh, he, they, they hated him. They hated the company. And he's doing the introduction. I'm like, okay, oh, thank you, Charles, the man wow. who did for introductions what botulism did for canned food. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you have to, what are you willing to go through? Yeah, and I did it, it, and I did it, and I did it. And then here's what I found. I found I could be authentically myself, mm -hmm. that I had... Uh, I, I, my gifts matched up with people's needs mm -hmm. and then I found a way to do it in a way that would honor them myself and my own family mm -hmm. and um, I think you know it's it is hard work you know what you're asking of people is hard yeah. but 
uh, what's harder? Let me tell you what's hard is hating what you do every single day. I owe, I owe, to, so off to work I go. Um, what I think is working in an environment that's contrary to your values every single day. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I see this all the time, and people get into the have to. Yeah. And uh, so you're asking people to do something difficult. But let me say this. You know, when you're suffering and sacrificing for that which you believe in, that's what you're aligned with your gifts, that's what's aligned with the breadcrumbs of the experience of your past, I did nothing like it. Yeah. There's nothing like it. And again, we've talked about this. Solomon, who was one of the wealthiest men who ever lived, said if you had enough over your, a roof over your head, enough food to eat, and you love the work that you do, that person can't tell the passing of one day to the next. It's true. And that is when I felt like a kid yeah. in school. You'd be off for three months. And when I'm doing the work, like my wife will tell all the time, when I'm doing it, I go, what day is today? Is today Tuesday? Oh, no, yeah. Brian, it's Friday. Yeah. Like you miss it by three days. Yeah. You know? I got to tell you something. I This is fun that you said that because I did not experience that, folks, until I stepped into this role four mm. years ago. Mm. I'm telling you, the yeah. days go by so unbelievably fast. The team will tell you. I have a mentality that I'm just hour to hour. Yeah. Because sure. I mean, you I am so engaged yeah. in the work. There right. is there is something that I've got to be focused on. And, and I'm telling you, quitting time comes around here and I right. go, What happened? Yeah. I thought it was nine thirty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Alex is smiling. He knows. He sees my schedule. Uh, and it's not a schedule where I'm like, oh it's a schedule where I'm like, Yeah. Right. Uh, and that's the reality. But, so, but here's the here's the other side of this, okay? Um, I'm not going to out your age here or anything else. But oh, I don't mind. You did, can tell everybody. Okay, this didn't happen overnight. No. And you were involved in work that was very engaging for everybody else to see. Oh, sure. Uh, the whole time. You you, uh, you had other people's dream job. Mm -hmm. And you're grinding along and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And, and you were getting closer. Yeah. You were getting closer till then you got to it. Yeah. And that's why I actually think where you're at now, this new book. I interviewed you the other day, and I, I was telling my brother Dermot, uh, who's the CEO of our company, I said, you know, I've interviewed, I don't know how many, hundreds of authors. And I said, I interviewed Ken the other day. And I go, you know, it's kind of a shame nowadays you interview an author. I'm not sure they know what's in their book. Mm -hmm. And this was coming out your pores, man. <laughs> yeah. And it was just coming out your pores. Yeah. And I go, this is the the yeah. sweet spot yeah. has gotten sweeter yeah. and sweeter. Yeah. And I think even for, like I say, your own example is a great example for people to yeah. encourage you. It didn't happen overnight. No. You kept grinding it. And no. even when things were good, you know, the enemy of the best is the good. Mm -hmm. And even when it was good, you didn't settle for good. You've kept pushing, mm. and now you're right there in the best, and I think it's good stuff. Well, I appreciate the kind words, and the only comment I would say to that is is that when you live it long enough, you don't have to uh, reference a page in your book right. to answer a question. It's right. like, well, this is what I believe, and the reason I believe it is I've got some experience behind it. I, you don't have to believe it, yeah. but I know it, right. and, and I think that's the key. Uh, and this leads me, it's a beautiful transition to, so you start the process, you get out there, two years of volunteering, you get good at it, uh -huh. and you realize, wait a second, I've got a gift, and I'm also seeing results, uh -huh. and then I've got this thing over here, a track record, where I'm actually really good at selling houses. Yeah. I'm going to help other people do it, and right. now we sit today, and we go, Buffini and Company, and yeah. I, I, I listed some of the stats. Uh -huh. We're talking global, yeah. exponential influence. Um, but I want to speak practically. People are watching right now. They're gonna a lot of people are gonna watch this later too, and they're thinking, okay, I know real estate's in my sweet spot. I want to do it for all of my reasons, mm -hmm. and I want to win big. What does Buffini and Company do for those people? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, two part question: Take it and run. Why is the coaching yeah. that you and I do on a daily basis so vital to anybody in any profession? Well, it, it's. Never, there, I don't know if there's an industry where it's more glaring yeah. what the differences are. Right. I think if people knew the actual numbers, they probably wouldn't get into real estate in the first place. I mean, first of all, people, I say you get people come up to you all the time. I'm getting into real estate. Why do you like real estate? I like houses. <laughs> I just love houses and I love people. Yeah. I love people and I love houses. Oh, okay. Well, that's because you haven't had any clients yet. Right. Okay. So that, that's going to change <laughs> for you. So, you know, loving houses and loving people doesn't make you a realtor. No. Uh, you know, being a trusted advisor, that takes work. Mm -hmm. Here's here's some stats, okay? So one out of every eight homes that's sold in America is sold to our clients. One out of every seven in Canada. Wow. You know, in places like South Africa, you get your license. You have to take the Buffini training to sell real estate. No kidding. Okay, so we know our numbers back and forwards. We're the only company ever partnered with the National Association of Realtors. So they have 100, they have 1.5 million members, right? So you talk about a growth industry, 150,000 people got into real estate this year. Yeah. So a lot of people get in. 
The average, here's the stats. The average realtor in the business less than two years last year made $8,500 in gross commissions before Whoa. expenses. $8,500. Wow. The turnover rate in real estate uh, is 87% every five years. Wow. So am I talking you out of it yet? Anybody excited yet? Yeah, I was going to say, I was gonna say, this is not a painting I expected no. to see. No, I, but here's the thing. This is where we live. Yeah. And we live in the reality because people think I got, in the, I got in the business, I got my license. I bought, First thing they do is buy a car they don't need. Yep. Uh, I need a brand new four-door car or whatever else. And then they go out and they get in the business because they don't understand the industry they got into. That mm -hmm. Actually helping people sell the homes is like the dessert. Yep. Lead generation, cultivating the lead serving the client going through that process that's where the whole thing is yeah. so for example i'll contrast it we it's training and coaching we try to train people first and then coach them yes so we built a training program called 100 days to greatness so in 100 days it's like it's kind of like the navy seal training for a realtor yeah during that time by the we have just the program we just brought out last january averaged six transactions in the first 100 days wow so they're making around $60,000 in their first 100 days, and they're trained as a realtor. Mm. Our average new agent makes one hundred twelve grand, which is a nice start. Now, the progression from then, Ken, they, 112, they typically get into coaching. Our average, you know, 25,000 people make 368,000. Wow. People who've been with us 10 years make 518, and people who've been with us 15 years make 719. When the average person is making 8,500 bucks who's in the business for two years. So here's what I'm going to say to you. If you're going to get into this business, you need to get in. Yeah. You don't stick, oh, I got a license. My Aunt Mary has a license. I got a license. I have a license to kill. What you have a license to do is kill your own business, yeah. kill your own finances, kill your own yes. marriage. A license is nothing. So there are licensees and then there are real estate professionals. You have to get trained. You know, uh, San Diego is a huge navy base it's got the navy seals are a base there in virginia beach uh they that the navy seals the commander of the navy seal says in combat you don't fall uh you fall to the level of your training yeah and and so you have to become trained you have to learn 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 and then when you have something going then we coach you yeah and so that's the process for me what where my passion goes why why am i so jack Here's the thing. I should be on the golf course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, done. You do not I, have to work. I've been flying around yeah. for decades. Okay. My passion is this. I was the guy that had the bills on his mantelpiece, yeah. that had the iron bar on his leg, that had the creditors calling, and I still remember those days. I have talked. You know, you do 2,000 seminars. At the end of the seminar, up comes the lady. Yeah. My husband left me. I have a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. I haven't worked outside the home, and I got into real estate. I've heard that story a thousand times. Yeah. And my passion comes from, I, I know the pain of yeah. that. I know the pain of the lack of income. I know the pain of insecurity. Like when you, and you're in real estate, you only get paid, think about this. You only get paid if you're 100% successful. Mm. You go to the doctor, you feel a little icky. Doctor goes, okay, take this. Two days later, still feel icky. Doc gets paid, prescription got paid. In real estate, we only get paid if we heal you. Mm. 100% success rate. Yeah. Imagine, you're a baseball player. You only get paid every for hits. Yeah. We, we, we subtract every time you miss. So in real estate, you only get paid for 100% success. The second thing is the income comes in in yeah. ebbs and flows. It's not every two weeks. not the 15th and the 1st. It's not. So you have these peaks and valleys. So you have to understand that there's the, the job of real estate, but there's the business of being a real estate yeah. professional. you got to be trained. you got to know the business. you got to know how to generate a customer. It's you got to know that. And if you generate enough customers, you can do the job, yeah. make sure. the money, do a great job, then pour yourself into the people, get referrals. Yeah. And next thing you know, you got renewable streams of revenue. And then here's the payoff. Now, here's the other side of the Darth Vader story that I began. The greatest thing about being in real estate is you eventually create the surplus to actually buy the product you sell. Yes. And the reason I was able to go into the speaking business is that I owned 47 pieces of real estate. Right. And over the years, all I did was pay those buggers off. Yep. So I got a chance when my wife says, honey, you need to go do this. You could do it. And I didn't need to make a dime. That's it. And I didn't need to compromise my values. And so many people who are in the speaking business, they do a four-hour seminar, be a four-hour sales pitch. Mm -hmm. I do two hours and 16 minutes. And at four minutes, I'd say, hey, I'll be in town in two months if you want to come see me. The average salesperson was making 8% sales. We were selling 42%.
Then I'd come back in a couple of months and we'd do our event. The average person would sell a 4% 4 of their the audience to coaching. We'd sell 32%. Why? Value, value, give, give, give. And we didn't need their money. Yeah. Mm. And so when you do the right things for the right in a, in, in a sequence, you can eventually make those kinds of decisions. You know, when you were here, right here in this table right now, you had taken care of business. You had your finances yeah. in place. You had your home taken care of, your family. So when you took the risk yeah. to go to the next level, you had the foundation to go That's do it. that. So good. Now you know why I love him. He is Brian Buffini. Buffini and Company, if this is hitting you and you need the coaching, and folks, what you just heard was a master answer on how to get qualified and get qualified the right way, and then what is the benefit of getting qualified the right way. Really great stuff. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a very quick break, and when we get back, Brian's going to join me as we take your calls. Oh, we're going to coach some people up, and it's going to be great. Don't move. This is The Ken Coleman Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org. We absolutely believe in it. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Thrilled to have you with us. Uh, if you watch the show on a regular basis, you're going, hey, uh, who's the guy next to you if you just joined us? Well, that's Brian Buffini, my dear friend. Uh, I would simply say that Brian is the guru when it comes to coaching and training. His company, Buffini Company, world class. Nobody's anywhere close to helping real estate professionals get qualified and then get promoted come on stage two stage five because if you get qualified the right way and you stay in their coaching program they're going to help you promote yourself into next level income and impact so i asked him to join me today uh if you're just now joining us here's what's great the show will be on demand as soon as we're done today go back and watch some of his story world-class stuff there uh, but real quick, before we get to the phones, uh, there are a lot of you out there that are in this number. We're seeing anywhere from 55 to numbers as high as 85% of people are considering mm. moving on, Brian, in the Great Resignation. And that's why I'm proud to partner with the number one job site in the United States, ZipRecruiter. They came to me and said, hey, Ken, we want to have our service go to your audience. And I said, all right, tell me about it. They started telling me I was blown away with the technology because they have a one-click matching process. You go online, fill out a profile, put the resume in. They start immediately matching your profile up to jobs that are listed with them. I thought, well, that's really great. Then they told me, Brian, that it's free. I said, wait a second. You're asking me to promote something free that works really good to my audience? I'm in. That's the best part. ZipRecruiter updates you every time your profile gets a look, a like, and a request for your contact info, the companies contact you directly, ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken, ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's where you go today. I don't know why you wouldn't add it to your tool belt with everything else we give you. And did I mention it's free? <laughs> why wouldn't you do that? Go do it today, ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. All right, Brian, you ready to answer some calls together? I was thinking old Zip Recruiter. It's kind of like eHarmony for getting a job, it right? It is. It is. You can't uh, go wrong. You can't go wrong. It certainly doesn't hurt. 844-747-2577 is the number. I've got a sharpened pencil ready to go. Rudy joins us to start us off in Washington, D.C. Rudy, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. How you doing? I'm living the dream. What are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm on my lunch break for work. All right. All right. <laughs> So how can we help today? Yeah, so um, just wanted to kind of get your wisdom on a particular situation that I'm experiencing. So uh, I graduated college in December of last year. I'm mm -hmm. currently uh, working in the corporate space doing mm -hmm. tech sales um, for a government contractor. Not necessarily my passion, not particularly good at it. And I also um, have an opportunity to work with my brother. He's an entrepreneur. He owns a few restaurants um, and, you know, I'll be doing managerial stuff there. And my question for you is, you know, I've been at this job now for about seven months and I'm thinking about taking the opportunity with my brother, but I'm worried that if I 
uh, leave, jump ship from this job that I'll be looked at as unreliable. And, um, you know, I won't be able to make my way back into the corporate space once I figure out what I want to do, because I'm not entirely sure on that. So I'm just wondering, you know, what your thoughts are on that. Um, okay, so like let's that. break this down. There's a whole lot here. And it's amazing that you call in with this question. And we got Brian Buffini in here who uh, runs a family business and his brother is in the control room. He's the CEO of the company. So he's going to have some very unique stuff to weigh in on here in a second. Uh, but let's start with the, what I think is the primary question. Are you going to look like a flake if you leave this technology job in governmental space um, uh, to do this thing with your brother? No, you're not going to look yeah. like a flake. Uh, th those days have changed. 40 years ago, sure. Uh, but if, if you've got a narrative and a story in your journey, uh, and it makes a lot of sense, I think if you were changing jobs every seven weeks for about a two-year period, yes, you're going to look like a flake. So I think that's a bit of an excuse for you not to really face this question. So let's take that off the table. You're not going to look like a flake. And if you were, and that's a big if right now, Brian and I are going to dive deep into this one. If you go work with your brother, okay, um, and you decide that the best way to do it is to leave this current job, uh, it's not going to hurt you down the road. But now I want to get into that. You're telling me you don't know what you want to do. And I'm glad you listened to the show. I'm glad you called. Because to me, that's the primary uh, homework assignment before we decide if we're going to go work for a brother. So I'm going to tell you straight up, I, whether it's your brother or anything else, I don't want you leaving this technology job until we know what we are leaving for. If right now, it's a good job and it's stability, yes or no? Yes. Okay. And you don't have the financial wherewithal, I'm guessing, to be able to just leave today and say, deuces, I'm out? Uh, no. Not okay. Else. All right. So I don't prescribe jumping. I'm not a fan of jumping. Jumping, it works in movies and motivational posters. It doesn't work in real life. Okay. I'm a fan of walking confidently. So um, let's just, let's just nail this down. Is there anything about the restaurant business with your brother? Forget the brother right now, but is there anything about this that you go, this is intriguing about my long-term uh, career. I, I, I'm in, intrigued. I'm fascinated by an element of this. Any of that at all? Yeah, I think what the real draw is with that opportunity is, you know, when I graduated college, I was looking to get into more of the HR, organizational health, um, you know, change management, onboarding, stuff like that. And I would be doing managerial stuff there, working directly with people. Okay, great. Um, you know, so let me jump in. Pause. Go ahead. What about HR, organizational management? What? Give me the heart and the why behind that. Why are you intrigued, interested, maybe even a connection to that? Tell me. I think because, I, you know, I just think it's important that people um, – live in a health, have a healthy work culture. You know, we, we spend so much time, you know, doing work and I'm really passionate about making sure that, you know, people go to a healthy place every day and, you know, are, are happy with their work wow. situation. So Brian, what I hear is the heart of a leader. Mm -hmm. That's what I hear. Do you hear that? Yeah. And, and uh, I hear heart all around. Yeah. He wants to care for people. Yeah. You know, as long as it leads, I mean, I, you know, the opportunity, like you said, I work, I work with brothers. I've had a bunch of brothers work with me. I think the real thing, is what are your gifts what has your past told you and um like whether it's with your brother or not you know don't just move from you know yeah. if, you, if you take a, a glass of sour milk and you take it from one fridge and put it in another fridge it's still a glass of sour milk yeah and now it's sour with your brother right so it's it better be it better be something you really want to yeah. do and i think you want to keep finding out where yeah. where those passions like what i well, you know you drew it out of them great ken i think you know, in there is a is a magical piece. He just yeah. said some magical stuff. Yeah. So here's the question, because we're going to stay with you here, because I want Brian to weigh in on something in a second. So, Rudy, are you telling me that the, what has been discussed with your brother right now is that you would come in and you would be in a leadership management situation? He's got multiple restaurants. And tell me what the discussion has been. I want to know, because I want to know if it matches up with what you just identified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had a few a, a discussion about it a few weeks ago, and he, he told me that in the beginning it would be a lot of training. You know, I have to do everything. You know, when you're an entrepreneur, nothing's above you or below you, so that's kind of the situation there. But he said that eventually the goal would be to put me, you know, in a managerial position. Okay. So, and uh, yeah. multiple restaurants where you're kind of yeah. floating and you're, you're developing the team, loving on the team. Yeah, and they just uh, – bought a new location so you know there'd be a lot of transition to manage that okay i'm going to ask you several questions real quick i'm going to turn it over to brian okay uh is he older or younger than you he's older than me okay what how would you describe your relationship in a couple of words right now um 
I think good. I think stable. Um, okay. Honest. Okay. Yeah. What are your concerns about working with your brother as it sits today in this moment? Any? Yeah, I think the biggest one, Ken, is that, um, like I said, I recently graduated college and I work from home. I would have to move to the Baltimore area, currently living with my family, so I just would have to, you know, live on my own. Ah, right. that's, I'm not, you're a big boy. Put your big boy pants on. That's it. Uh, I'm saying about your brother. You didn't answer the question. Do you have any? And it, by the way, if you don't have any, great. I'm, I'm teeing Brian up here because he, he actually knows what it's like to work with his brother. I don't. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I want to know, do you have any legitimate concerns right now about working with your brother? I'm talking day in, day out, relating with him. He's the boss. Oh, no. Okay. No. All right, Brian, take well, it away. All I right, just, well, I would say this. So in, in, in my relationship, I'm your brother, and my brother is you, Rudy. And uh, here, so my brother started in the most entry-level position in the company. I had two other brothers in the company as well at the time. And he earned his stripes, you know, each step along the way. He, I gave him this task, and he was good for a couple of years. And I gave him this task, and he was, and everywhere he went, he won. The big thing is, can your brother see you in the light of who you become as opposed to who you are as his little brother? And, you know, when I look at my brother today, he's the CEO. He's, he's the most, one of the most influential men in the world in real estate uh, in his own right. And so, but he grew into that, and I had to see him different. And so I think it helped me being a parent of six kids that, you know, you have to relate to somebody who they are now as opposed to who they were. Does your brother have the capabilities as you grow and as you develop and you become this HR monster who has the – you're going to have all these people who you they know you care for them. They're going to play for you. They want to work hard for you. Is he going to see you as who you become? Is he fired up about that? Is he excited to see you grow? Or is that something that would make him feel insecure? Yeah, so Rudy, I hope you caught that. Uh, that's your homework assignment to have that conversation with Big Bro. Uh, got it, yeah. And, and you got, listen, you guys got to own this. Mm-hmm. And uh, the only final thing that I would ask you to consider is once you guys have that conversation and you got the compensation stuff figured out mm-hmm. and you go, this is a good step for me. It must be a good step for you. You are currently doing work that you have zero passion and missional connection to. But do not leave it. Until you say, yep, this is a step on the ladder. I'm not committing the rest of my life to my brother. But if it is a good step towards experiencing and learning to do the work of leading and caring for people in a work context, um, and all the numbers and the relationship stuff is figured out, um, I, I say go for it. Well, I'd say this, Kenny. I The good news is now, my brother and I have a blast. Oh, yeah. We're 22 years working together. Yeah. We've worked out all the foibles over the time, and now we have a blast. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, it it's adds, a long haul. It is a long haul, but yeah. it's if it works out, it's the best. Yeah, I love that. That is that is really really good. Eight four four seven four seven two five seven seven. Amanda, I want to pick Samantha up, but it's uh, can I pick her up? It's green on the screen, so I want to make sure. Yep. See, I'm color coded. So folks, you got a little behind the scenes here. Nice. They've trained me. I'm supposed to pick up the caller on the screen that's gold. Mm. Gold means go. You've been well trained. But if I pick it up, then we have a phone snafu. But thank you, Amanda. You bailed me out. But you see, you've trained me, and I'm paying attention. Now Samantha's ready to go. She joins us in Lewisburg, Virginia. Samantha, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken Coleman. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. So I've called before. Okay. I've called before, Mm -hmm. and you gave me advice of just – apply for a leadership position, okay. but I still felt unclear. Mm-hmm. So I'm working for a university, mm-hmm. not going to say the name, but I have the role as a health promotion coordinator, mm-hmm. but I do a lot with COVID-19 mm-hmm. and which I understood, but I don't know. I don't foresee myself doing anything going up. I don't see myself getting another position. I have my evaluation mm-hmm. and they're evaluating me based off the health promotion coordinator when Realistically, my job is contact tracing and things like that. And he made it clear we something could potentially come up in the future, but there is no – he can give me a definite answer. But I can see now where I'm at in the Lynchburg area is not enough room for me to grow and really thrive in. And I'm just curious as to what's my next steps. I took your clear – your clear – You took uh, the Get Clear assessment. Career Assessment. I did. Do you have and your results in front of you? I do. Yes. I want you to read and them I too. Find out for the okay. okay. I want you to read it them says, too. Okay. I can read the purpose statement. It says, I was created to use my talents of justice, connection, communication mm-hmm. to perform my passion of leading, promoting, pro- 
performing mm-hmm. to accomplish my mission of influence by producing change and progress. Oh, I love it. Now, you can be honest because no assessment's perfect because the mm-hmm. people who take it aren't. When you read that, when you read it the first time, when you read it to me today, is that on point? Is it off mm-hmm. a little bit? How does it feel? Well, no, it does feel on point because people have told me I communicate well. Yep. I do well with connecting other people. Yep. I am a good leader, promoting yep. and influence. Like, I, I feel like I have a, even at work now, um, my supervisor, like, you have a great influence just yes. to make sure you use okay. it to influence, you know, so, good. So I do have those in performance, hands down. Yeah, great. So here's what I hear when I hear that purpose statement. This is all about people work. Mm. It's people work. Mm-hmm. You're good with people. You love working with people, true or false? True. Absolutely true. And when I see things like justice, to you, it's about doing things the right way for the right reasons. That's what the talent of justice is. I wrote this assessment myself. I picked that word on purpose because I wanted people to see that there is a talent that can be honed into a skill. And it's like we do things right and we do it for the right reasons. That's you. All right. Now, when I hear performing (laughs) in that passion column see performing doesn't always mean on stage or in an arts you know in acting it means i like scoreboards i like being held accountable to scoreboard that sounds like you doesn't it yes actually both of them i don't mind like getting on stage that's right Mm -hmm. all right so now here's the deal so the leading and the performing and i heard the connecting and the communication all that says i want to be in the people business and that's why your missional result your top missional result was influence it's all about people. I want transformation is my game. That's my juice. I need to be helping people go from here to here. That's your deal. And so it's funny that you called back a second time in the last call, minus the assessment, I told you to go into leadership. I don't remember our phone call. I'll be very honest with you. I don't remember. But mm-hmm. I heard enough to say you want to lead people. Mm-hmm. And so you call me back today and you go, Ken, what do I do? And I'm going to let Brian coach you up here in a second because he leads an organization and he teaches people how to lead as well. But listen to me, Samantha, you're trying to run away from the reality that you need to be leading people, not doing contact tracing. Mm -hmm. You need to be leading results and results come from helping other people win. So you want to know what your next step is? Looking for leadership positions within this university because you're already in the system. They know you looking for leadership positions outside of that. You've got the talent. You've got some experience in leading people. You need to be leading people. Brian, what are you hearing on the other end of this? I heard leadership, and I heard people, and I heard pigeonhole. And she's pigeonholed into a job right now where, you know, you're you're pushing a button, you're doing contact tracing, you're meeting the need for the organization, but uh, that's not what floats your boat. Uh, I definitely hear the leadership, and you have a little sparkle to you, which I like. A little showmanship, I like that. Yeah, come on, yeah. You, yes, sir. You don't yeah, mind? Yeah, yeah. come on. And so, you know, a lot of people are terrified by that, a lot, right? The number one fear people have is public speaking, and you like to be out there out front. Um, I, the, one, the one challenge I'd give you is uh, you said, you know, Lewisburg's a little small, and there's not a lot of opportunities there. Uh, my favorite personal growth book is a book called Acres of Diamonds. Mm. You could read it in about an hour. And this is a guy who developed the personal growth and development movement, and he's talking back in the late 1800s, and people are saying, uh, he's in Philadelphia. There's no opportunities here in Philadelphia. I have to go to New York. I I can't make it a success in Philadelphia. I have to go to New York and all of these different things. And he was trying to let people know there's plenty of opportunities right underneath your feet, and that's what Acres of Diamonds are. You might be shocked, Samantha, to find out that right in your hometown, there's an opportunity for you not to be this walk in to be the leader today, but to get on a ladder that will allow you to be mentored and trained by someone who does lead, who recognizes one. You got to understand this, and this is Ken's whole world. They say it takes one to know one. Yeah. Someone who has a little mm-hmm. sparkle and someone who is a leader will recognize that I have a little sparkle and I'm a leader, <laughs> and I hear you and I go, oh, I like this gal. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> That's what you want. You want the people to go, oh, this this reminds me of me. Uh, this is someone I want to mentor. This is someone I want to – she needs to prove that I can trust her and that I can count on her. And, by the way, don't be shocked if that opportunity is in Lewisburg, yeah. an acre of diamond right underneath your feet. That's it. So good. Samantha, I'll give you two but things. To, go ahead. You have a question? I was going to say this. So I, I felt like I ran into somebody like that, mm-hmm. and it's almost as if they're not – fulfilling what they said or they don't have the educate like my like the person over the place the department i'm working for sure. said yeah. they could do those things but now not following through 
or it's almost as if he, they can't provide. Like That's right. they made a comment that said, well, I can't give you what I don't have. So right. I have a different degree and what they have. So right. I have a little bit further than them. That's right. So that, cause I thought that's, I thought I was, I did meet someone. I feel like, Oh, this would be great. But yeah. now when I'm seeing, they're not able to, that's fine. So in that area, welcome to life. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever seen a mouse go through a maze, but they get to the cheese. Mm-hmm. The mouse mm-hmm. always gets to the cheese. You know why? Because the mouse knows what it's going for, and it smells it. You mm-hmm. want a lead. You've got a lid on you right where you are. Welcome to the dance. This is the price of admission and working and living on purpose. You will hit lids. So you know what you do? Mm-hmm. We already turned this rock over. That ain't the rock. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep turning over rocks, and I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an opportunity to lead, and so you keep looking. Don't you dare accept a dead end or a lid. It just simply means not here. You're hearing no. You hear finality. By the way, no is a very final word. Uh, it feels awful. It feels so no. Boom. I learned to turn no's into not here, not yet, not now. And that's my encouragement to you. One other piece of advice I want to give you, because leadership is terrifying for new leaders. It just is. Because it is a whole different ballgame. It's one thing to be responsible for myself, Brian. It's another thing to be responsible for (laughs) others. And I like to simplify leadership, but I I want to give you the last word to to encourage Samantha and other people that are listening right now that are, they're going to get promoted. And when you get promoted in stage five, it's coming with leadership 99.9% of the time. That's just the nature of the game. And I try to simplify the process of learning to be a leader for young leaders or new leaders. And I say it's two things. Get in the habit of, Asking daily or weekly or certainly consistently, how are you doing? That's a personal question. It's not something we say as we walk by them Mm -hmm. full speed in the hallway. Hey, how are you Mm -hmm. doing? That's personal. Second, how can I help you win here? Mm -hmm. If you can just get in a habit of actually asking and listening to those questions and then doing something about it when and where you can, Mm -hmm. you'd be surprised at how great of a leader you will eventually develop into. Uh, I try to simplify it because at the end of the day, that to me is servant leadership, but you lead a a large organization. What would you say to Samantha on this journey? Yeah, she needs to find someone who's going to believe in her and she needs to make sure she believes in her. You know, I I was mentored by a guy named uh, Mason Ludlow and Mason Ludlow was our general manager. And he had, uh, you know, it's funny how corporate America works. This guy ran 2,000 Kmarts. Mm. Uh, this guy brought Home Depot to China and uh, went to China for nine years, came back. And it, they say, oh, you're 60. You know, you're no good to us now. You're corporate America. And this is how the, the companies think. And I'm like, this guy's just getting good. And he was our general manager for the next 10 years. And he saw me and he saw Dermot. He mentored me as a chairman. He mentored Dermot as a CEO. And, and he taught me a principle called management by walking around. Mm. And uh, I'd go and just check in with people. How is it going? How are you doing? And, and you'd catch little things. And you're making little deposits in people. What, what Samantha needs to find is someone who's willing to make a deposit in her mm-hmm. and someone who actually enjoys the process. They're comfortable enough in their own skin not to be intimidated by her degree or her sparkliness or who she is or that great laugh she has. Uh, she needs to find someone who likes her for who she is, sees the potential, and is in, is enjoys the process of bringing her along. And those people exist. Those people exist. You got to look hard. You got to look for the opportunity. Uh, and you you basically go on an interview. You're interviewing the interviewer to say, hey, you know, I'm looking for someone who's going to. Uh, lead me. I'm looking for someone who's going to grow me. I'm going to look for someone who's going to challenge me. Are you the person to do that? Mm-hmm. And how do you do it? Yeah. And that's the deal. And, and in the in the labor shortage world we're in today, you get to interview the interviewer. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think, Samantha, you got a lot going on for you, girl. Yeah, you want to ever get to California, we'll find a spot for you, let me tell you. <laughs> but uh, she's got a lot on the ball. I got to tell you, we'll have to discuss this over a steak tonight, but mm-hmm. I got to figure out how do we get you to Tennessee, back to America, uh, instead of the People's Republic of California. I'm, someone's got to fight the fight, Kenny. I know. Someone's got to fight the fight. I knew it was a losing proposition, but uh, this lady out there in the lobby's clapping for you. So uh, there you go. Uh, he's a great dude. Well, folks, uh, if you've listened to the show for any amount of time, you've heard people call in. Uh, who want to win in real estate. And once I confirm that that's a really good move for them, I tell them, you better go see my pal, Brian Buffini, uh, Buffini and Company. Uh, they're the best at what they do. Uh, and if you're thinking about it, uh, going in that space, you're in the space, you've got to get qualified. And then if we step forward to stage five in the seven stages, you want to get promoted? These guys know what they're doing. Buffini and Company, the website is... 
AffiniCompany.com. There it is, AffiniCompany.com. They are world class at what they do. And uh, I want you to engage with him. By the way, he's got a, a New York Times, Wall Street Journal best selling book, The Immigrant Edge. Fabulous read. If you're looking for something to just motivate you, is the dream possible? The answer is wildly, emphatically, in all bold, yes. And my friend Brian and his story and his company can help you get there. Hey, pal, thank you. That Appreciate was a lot it. Of fun. A lot of fun. I had so much fun. Yeah, it makes me want to come back to Tennessee. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey, I got to get out of here. But remember this. You matter, and you do have what it takes. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Well, for all of our work.